The war is for the souls, men and women, and boys and girls. All right, I'm going to start off with a couple of passages here, have a word of prayer, say a few things, and tell you what we're going to do. Proverbs chapter 29, and look there in verse 2. Proverbs 29, 2. Proverbs 29, 2. When the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. But when the wicked beareth rule, the people mourn. Right? 28, and look at verse 12. When the righteous men do rejoice, there is great glory. When the wicked rise, the man is hidden. All right, let's pray. Father, we thank you for the reading of your word. Thank you for this special day in our country. Two verses I read bear special meaning, not just to this day, but the condition of our country. And so we, we look to thee in faith that you will do something, that you will intervene. And we pray that we would not get so lopsided that we would forget who we are and where our citizenship is. Every one of us who are saved have citizenship in heaven. We're just here, strangers and foreigners, and we're moving on. And so we pray we would get the order right and, and live it out, of course, to your honor and glory very concerned as we <clears throat> enter these end of the last days that people are that who are not saved that are apathetic toward salvation uh, negligent to think it it matters uh, to really address the, the seriousness of the issue if you were to come back while i'm speaking we would go to be with you in the twinkling of an eye. And everybody here who is watching and everybody here who is in this assembly would stay right here. And in all likelihood, maybe a little stunned in the beginning, but then go on as we went on before, lost and blind. I would not like that to happen to anybody here, but I know you are more compassionate and more persistent than I am. I just pray that we can do all things well here this morning, that your name might be exalted, lifted up, and that we would see somebody come to Christ either with the children or here or watching, and that we will be clean vessels unto your honor. And we pray all this now in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, this is the 245th anniversary of our country. Uh, I, uh, I love my country. This is my country. But our country is in big trouble. And I mean big trouble. And so I'm going to address that in a little, little bit. But I want this to be a special day not so much as going outside of ourselves, but closing in on ourselves. And what I mean by that is many times we have people in our, in our group that have come to Christ and traveled different roads to get there, but have wound up in the same place. And those of you that are faithful to come to Sunday school and we have give testimonies and stuff. Uh, sometimes some of that comes out. Most of the time it's, it's abbreviated. And so what I want to do this morning, I want to give uh, attendance to a testimony that uh, this individual has wanted to give. It's been on his heart. And we all know, we all know him, uh, Frank, and he, uh, some of you know him as the Gator Trapper and everything Gator-wise. Um, I know him. I know him uh, a little that way and and more. I know him as a friend, a dear friend, 
and a very dear brother. And so he wanted to come and, and say some things. And uh, I, need, I need for him to come and say some things because if, when it's on your heart, you know that the Lord wants us to know what it's, what's there. So, brother, you come on. Howdy, how y'all doing this morning? This is a little nerve-wracking, so I'm trying to pull it together. I was telling the pastor before this, I can go talk in front of a group of a thousand people, but when it comes to talking in front of the church, it's, uh, it's a little bit to handle, but I'm, uh, I'm taking care of it because the Lord's kind of, again, kind of put this on me, so. I um, hope we can start with a prayer if you guys don't mind. Lord God, um, I'm up here this morning to bring glory and honor to you. Nothing of myself. Uh, please, Lord, let yourself to be uh, glorified through all this, Lord, and what you've done in my life, and bring me to salvation and everything else, Lord, and it's just, uh, it's a lot. Please give me the right words to say, and put this in your name. Amen. Uh, all right, can uh, we turn to Isaiah 46? And looking at uh, verses 9 and 10. Remember the former things of old, for I am God, and there is none else. I am God, and there is none like me, declaring the end from the beginning and from the ancient times, the things that are not yet done, saying my counsel shall stand, and I will do all my pleasure. So I've been uh, kind of having this weird journey in the Bible looking up God's foreknowledge, and, uh, and you're looking at, looking at prophecy, looking at everything he kind of knows is going to happen. He knows everything that's going to happen, but yet we still have the free will to turn left or right or do what we're going to do, stand up in front and talk like this, which I have to admit, um, this is something I never thought I would do. Um, if you would have asked me this 10 years ago, I would have and said, hey, you're going to be standing in front of a church having a conversation. I would have told you you were crazy. Um, it's just, it's just not something I ever, uh, I ever expected. Um, so, my, my story kind of starts with the Lord, starts about nine years ago, almost, almost I guess, uh, about a week or so from now is when I, uh, I got saved nine years ago. Before that, um, I've been working with, uh, with alligators for, uh, for 26 years, doing that for the state. Uh, it allows me to meet and talk to a lot of odd people, which I mean, I'm probably at the top of the list of odd people, but um, I'd probably win that trophy at least. Um, it allows me to meet a random, probably 1,500 to 2,000 people a year and be in some situations that are pretty sketchy um, a lot of times. Things you sometimes don't think you're going to walk back from. Uh, Lord always seems to find a way to work, you, work your way through it. I didn't realize that until I got saved, you know, how much uh, his, his grace got me through a lot of things. Um, whew, sorry, I'm trying to pull it together here. There's a, I think there's a spiritual pressure and there's a phys physical pressure. I know I, ha I had surgery a couple weeks ago, not a couple weeks ago, about four months ago, which I'll get into that in a minute. But uh, when you get out of surgery and you've had your sternum opened up, there's a, this, phys there's this physical pressure. It feels like somebody has an anvil sitting on your chest and you can't breathe. And that's where... I've been at over the past uh, probably year spiritually. I've wanted to get up and talk about this, and you know, I called Mike last week, and I said, "Man, I." I actually called him crying. I said, "Mike, I don't know what's going on. Uh, I need to. I need to have this conversation with the church. I don't know why I've been nervous about it for so long. Do you mind if I get up here and talk?" And Mike said, "By all means." So, it's uh, you. Know, Physical pressure versus spiritual pressure. Um, if we can look to Proverbs 16, 9. A man's heart devises, devises his way, but the Lord directed his steps. So again, uh, you know, I just, uh, this pressure's been on me to get up here and talk about this. 
And it, again, you're looking at foreknowledge versus free will, which is a lot to wrap your mind around. Um, a lot about it in the Bible, but I think some ways it's probably a little bit above our pay grade. I hope to ask the Lord about it sometime. Um, it's uh, a lot, but anyhow, uh, 10 years ago, I went on a gator call here in Titusville, and uh, I don't think I met the person at that, that time. Um, it was actually Chris, who sits back in the back. It was a gator call at her place, and talked to her on the phone, said that she had a bunch of gators in the backyard talking to each other, after which I told her those are probably frogs. Um, that's not alligators. I said, when you have an alligator bellow in your backyard, you'll know it. Call me back when there's actually something going on. So the next year, um, she had called the state again, and I called her back, and she said, yep, well, the windows in the house are pretty much shaken. We definitely had alligators in the backyard bellowing. We have video of it. And I said, okay, well, now I can come do something about it. So I came there, uh, met them, and before I left, she said, do you go to church? And I said, Never really been to a church, never really, you know, I mean, it's, I have nothing against it, just never really been. I said, well, my dad's a preacher at a local church right on the street, why don't you come sometime? I said, you know what, okay, sure, I will. Um, showed up that next, uh, that next Sunday, and I'm sitting back in the back corner where I hide sometimes, and uh, I'm listening to the word be preached, and the gospel be preached, and I am coming unglued. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> I'm, I'm crying. I'm like, man, am I sad? Did something, like somebody smashed my foot? Like, what's going on? Like, I'm supposed to be this tough guy, and I am just, I'm losing it. What, what is going on with me? So after that service, I, uh, I actually, I think I called her and I said, hey, this was, that was very different. I, I liked it, but man, I don't, something's, something's really wrong with me. I don't know what's happening. She said, you should call and talk to my dad. So I called and talked to Mike and um, sit down, actually went over to his house and sat down with him. And he walked me through the Lord's word. Um, we can turn to Romans 10, 9 and 10. These are some of the verses he had me read when I was at his house. Just super thankful for people taking the time to care about your soul. You know, it's uh, nobody had to say a word, but... Um, they were looking for that relationship, me to have that relationship with God, which I wouldn't have had. I'd never heard of salvation before all this. I, I didn't know what I was missing. Uh, Romans, um, where was I at? 10, 9, and 10. That if the Lord shall confess with thy mouth, thou, that if, the, if thou shall confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and thou shalt believe in thy heart that God hath raised him from the dead, Thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. And if we can look over to Ephesians 2 8. These stuck in my head, I mean, obviously. For by grace are ye saved through faith, and not that, not that of yourselves, it is the gift of God. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. And let's see, got two more. Uh, Romans 4.25. Who was delivered for our offenses and was raised again for our justification? And last one, Romans 10, 13. Sorry if I'm going too fast, y'all. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So he set me down, had me read these myself, um, and then... Uh, Asked me some asked me some questions along with it, and which that was pretty much the easiest choice I ever made personally. Um, hearing all this and understanding what it all meant, um, 
I remember going out after talking to him, going out in the driveway and praying, asking the Lord to save me. Like, you know what, Lord, please, you know, come in my heart, save me. Uh, I understand, I understand what salvation is and what it takes. And uh, yeah, please, please, please save me. And like I said in the beginning, you know, I know the Lord chooses some odd people. Um, I'm pretty much the oddest of the odd. Uh, I didn't quite understand anything at that point. Uh, I've been learning. I still don't understand a whole lot. I'm still I'm still getting there. Um, since that point, it's uh, interesting when you have a big alligator laying in somebody's backyard, what you can talk to them about. It allows you to talk to people about uh, pretty much whatever you want to. Um, you know, you can talk about... Uh, God's grace and glory and everything about him and nobody says a word because you're sitting there with a you know one of God's creatures that are pretty magnificent um, if we can look at Proverbs 3 5 and 6 please Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct, direct thy paths. So, um, a couple of years ago, I got a call to go get a gator in Chicago. Um, weird place for an alligator to be. Uh, that was almost seven years of the day of being saved. Uh, a couple of days, couple of days away from that. And it's uh, kind of allowed me to talk to a lot of a lot of people that you know I would have never talked to. I would have never been in Chicago in the first place. Uh, I've tried to give God the glory for all that the whole way through because it's 100% Him and not me, just a guy with a weird job. Um, you know, it doesn't come down to politics or anything else. It's just uh, the Lord putting on your heart that souls need to be saved and you need to talk to people and need to have those conversations. Which, I don't know why for me, has always been easier to people I don't know than to people in church and to family. And that's, uh, you know, another reason I'm up here. It's been a, been a fault of mine, and I, I, I'm just trying to make that right with the Lord. Um, yeah, so, if we can turn to Ephesians uh, 4.32. And be ye kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, hath forgiven you. So that's what I just keep reminding myself when I'm up there. You know, Lord put us put us here to be kind to one another and to spread his word. So I keep trying to do that above anything else that's of me because it's, again, it's been pretty obvious from the beginning. It is not me. Um, just thinking about that and the Lord's plan with all this, uh, it's, and everything that's happened since, it's pretty crazy, um, you know, but the Lord makes sense out of some strange things. If we can go to uh, Psalm 32. Thank you all for putting up with me. I will instruct thee and teach thee in the way which thou shalt go, and I will guide thee with mine eye. So I've been, since being saved, I didn't know what the Lord had in mind for me. I know he put me here to work with uh, crocodilians. That was pretty obvious. Uh, I didn't know what past that. Uh, so I, you know, I've been asking the Lord for a long time to kind of show me, show me a path and what it is you have for me, Lord. If we can look over to Romans 8, 28. This is getting somewhere, I promise. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. So again, I've tried to give God the glory through all this. Uh, I don't believe any of it would still be going on if it wasn't for that. Um, 
so last November, I found out I needed heart surgery. Um, the city's the city of Chicago, and you know, people down here. I think you know, looking at it, the Lord knew that was coming, and He let this whole story work out the way it did. I've never never been a rich guy, never had insurance, um, never been able to pay for anything other than what's just the basic needs to survive. You know, catching alligators doesn't make you rich. It's just something to do, kind of, sort of. Um, so, you know, November, that happened. The media up there and people down here and friends up there, people I don't even know who they are, put together a GoFundMe page for me and funded my entire surgery. Um, that's a, It's, again, so much more than me. Uh, I, I don't even know how to, how to really go about that. Um, I just know God has a plan. Uh, he set forth a plan in place for me, and uh, I can't be more thankful for him for the everything he's done for me and, and his saving grace. And I just uh, appreciate letting me stand up here and talk about it. I don't know what's next, but you know I'm, I pretty much ask the Lord continually to send me send me where He needs me to be, and uh, and I'll be happy to go. So I thank you all for listening to me. I think he thought he was going to go till noon. <laughs> and I said, you'd be surprised how much you have. And when you give it out, how quick it goes. So I appreciate him giving that testimony for sure. All right. Now, I read two passages this morning, Proverbs 29 and 28. Uh, and... Um, I'm going to pick up where I left off about the love I have for my country um, and, uh, and that I'm not really happy right now with the direction. So in 29.2 and 28.12, um, we saw two truths in there. One of them is righteousness exalts as a nation, and the other one is that wickedness destroys it. There's no in between. So on that basis, let's go to Proverbs chapter 11. Proverbs chapter 11. If you were in Sunday school, we turned to an awful lot of verses this morning. And uh, I never knew that Frank was going to turn to all those verses, but what is that was really good. John Proverbs 11, look at verse 10. When it goeth well with the righteous, the city rejoices. And when the wicked perish, there is shouting. By the blessing of the upright, the city is exalted, but it is overthrown by the mouth of the wicked. We see that national godliness is at stake here. And there's a direct link between righteousness and blessing wickedness and destruction. Uh, and looking down here also at verse 12, which we read earlier today in Sunday school, he that is void of wisdom despiseth his neighbor, but a man of understanding uh, holdeth his peace. Uh, in verse 12 is, a, is really giving you a preview of the critical race theory uh, bottom line. It is out to, for you to hate your neighbor your your parents, your children, your brothers, your sisters, your your fellow countrymen. It's it's all about Marxism. It's all about about everybody turning each other in. Uh, I understood that Facebook is now coming out with a a uh, thing where if you feel threatened by somebody's post and they use a scripture verse, you feel harmed by. Turn them in. I mean, this, we're, we're, this is communism 101. Uh, it's very simple. So God's word teaches us that the fear of the Lord is in 
chapter 1, verse 7, and chapter 9, verse 10, the beginning of knowledge. Knowledge is important. In Psalm 111, 10, it's the beginning of wisdom. So if you, if you take wisdom, I mean, it's, it's the right use of knowledge. If you don't have any knowledge, how can you be wise? If you don't study the word, you don't get anything in. How can you be wise in what's there if you don't gain any knowledge? Proverbs chapter 14, verse 26, there is strong confidence that results from fear of the Lord. Now, I will go out and tell you very confidently that I know that I will spend eternity in, in heaven with the Lord. I don't do that on the basis of me. I do that on the basis of God and his word. I have a strong confidence in that because I've done exactly what God has said to reach that point. Uh, Proverbs chapter 8, verse 13 says, the fear of the Lord is to hate evil. And in chapter 16, verse 6, to depart from evil. Now, I said all that to bring us to this point, 1 Timothy chapter 2, 1 Timothy chapter 2. In verse 1 and 2, I exhort, therefore, that, first of all, supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men, for kings and for all that are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. All right? Our goals in, in these prayers and supplications are twofold. One is that the people mentioned here get saved. I'm praying, if we're praying for a president, a vice president, or government, the city, the governor, whomever, we're praying for lost people to get saved. And number two, that we might be, therefore be able to lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. So it, it really is a complete picture. You have your compassion for the lost, you're praying for their, for their souls that to get saved, and obviously it would have a bearing on we who try to live out our, our Christian lives because the, the more wicked it gets, the more freedoms just vanish day by day. So I'm going to read, read from a few important documents here. Uh, then I'm going to read a quote and make a statement or, or two. And uh, we'll go from there. So the first place I want to read is from the, and these are all abridged, obviously, is from the uh, preamble to the Constitution of the United States. We the people of the United States, in order to form a more perfect union, establish justice, ensure domestic tranquility, provide for the common defense, promote the general welfare, and secure the blessings of liberty to ourselves and to and our posterity, do ordain and establish this Constitution of the United States of America. You know why I'm reading this? Because we have children that have no idea what a Constitution is. And many of us grew up with just a, a rudimentary understanding of the Constitution or anything about our government. And so it's important. Here we are, July 4th. Why is this important? This is what our government, this is what it's founded on. All right, the second is from the Declaration of Independence, a uh, preview of that. Congress, July 4th, 1776, unanimous declaration of the 13 United States of America, when in the course of human events, it becomes necessary for one people to dissolve the political bands which have connected them with another and to assume among the powers of the earth a separate and an equal station to which the laws of nature and of nature's gods, God entitles them a decent respect to the opinions of mankind requires that they should declare the causes which impelled them to the separation. We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, that to secure these rights, 
Governments are instituted among men, deriving their just powers from the consent of the governed. And then it goes on. All right, and the third one is the Bill of Rights, only the First and Second Amendment. Amendment chapter, verse one, Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof or abridging the freedom of speech or of the press or the right of the people peaceably to assemble and to petition the government for a redress of grievances. Amendment two, a well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state, the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. Okay, I read all that to get to this place. And that is the definition of the form of our government. That is a constitutional republic. It is not a democracy. Whoever has been spoon feeding you that it is a democracy, been doing that for one specific reason, and that is to take everything from you. And I'll show you what, why. Um, Well, I'll tell you why later. No, I actually will. In a democracy, if you have a 51% vote of the people, they can take 100% of your rights away. I'll give you an example. Abortion. What are the rights of the unborn? None. They have no rights. Florida, Florida family law. Children have no rights. They're all dependent on lawyers to speak for them until they reach a certain age. That's a democracy. That's not a constitutional republic. Um, now, constitutional republic, by the way, uh, the rights of all the people are equally protected and there's freedom of choice. So here's a quote from Friday, July 2nd, 2021. It was made from the current president of the United States. And there is some language before that, the statement I'm gonna read, and there's some, some language after the statement I'm gonna read. So if you think that I'm taking it out of context, you can read it and uh, at your pleasure. And uh, I'm firmly convinced that I didn't take it out of context. And this is quote, you can't define America. I defy you to tell me what constitutes an American. You can't do it, unquote. Well, Mr. President, I have a rich heritage from men who forged this country to become the most blessed country in the entire world. They knew tyranny firsthand and they fought hard. They escaped it and then they fought hard against the British and won out. They suffered through the early years. I remember reading about their, their first Thanksgiving and they were, they were doling out food and each child, each person at the table got five kernels of corn. Not ears of corn, five kernels of corn to be able to make it through. Many lives were lost in the early years, but they endured and they created a more perfect union. They lived what they wrote in the Declaration of Independence. They lived out what they wrote. We are all created equal and endowed by the God of the Bible with unalienable rights, life, liberty, pursuit of happiness. I'm the recipient of many wars that were fought to retain those rights, liberties, and freedoms. And I acknowledge my debt to all of those people, men and women, who sacrificed their lives in order that I might be free and that you might be free. I am also the recipient of the one who gave his life for me to pay my debt of sin with his precious blood, his death, his burial, his literal bodily resurrection, so that I, a sinner, could be justified 
and saved for eternity by receiving the Lord Jesus Christ as my Savior. It was a by faith transaction. Apart from all works, ceremonies, traditions, and rituals. Finally, Mr. President, I refer you to our national anthem and the closing words of each stanza. The home of the free and the land of the brave. Mr. President, that is what an American is. I can define it, for I am one of them. It was aptly put that if, that, and I'm quoting, perhaps this July 4th would be, in light of the terrible condition of our country, it would be better spent to skip the picnics, the beaches, the fireworks, the, the vacation spots. Instead, maybe we should fill our churches to pray that this might be, not be our last Independence Day. Unquote. We're in trouble. Anybody that thinks we're not is, is, has, is an ostrich with their head in the sand. We're in deep, deep trouble. And, and people are partying, people are, are doing all kinds of things and ignoring exactly the trouble we're in. One prayer service isn't gonna turn everything around. But we've got to understand, this is not gloom and doom. This is the greatest country on the, on the face of the earth is sinking and we have a leader that says we cannot describe what an american is what does that tell you and we have people that are going around and we we're we're laboring and and emphasizing transgenderism and pretty soon if you remember what i read with the, when we were talking about the rainbow situation bestiality is right around the corner and all these things are coming to pass. And we're worried about, hey, how are we going to celebrate today? Well, if I can celebrate today, I, celebrate, I am free today. I, I, I have a, a degree of liberty. And, and I know that, that I'm freer today than I was yesterday. Maybe. I think maybe I'm not as free today as I was yesterday. But I'm freer today more than I'll be tomorrow. We have, we have a working network of people that are f work, working against everything that is pure, decent, godly, true. So if you stand for any of those things, there's a warfare going on. Many of it's unseen, and we have to know who the enemy is, and Satan's working through people and doing a great job. We, we have a lot to be proud of. We have a lot to be concerned of, with. And if, and if we can't pick up the ball here and, and, and see what's going on, we have apostates next door, across the street, and across that street. We have liberals people that are infidels and they're holding services and some many of those services are mega churches and people wonder and say, well, we don't want to say anything about that. We have people that are just enjoying and celebrating and celebrating and celebrating kind of like fiddling while Rome burned. No concern for anything other than themselves. We are to pray. We are to make supplication with thanksgiving for those who are in authority, that they might be saved, and number two, that so that we can live out decently our Christian lives. You can't, you can't, you can't have one without the other. And, and so yeah, I remember Kenny many times will pray, we need more righteous leaders in government. Well, you know what many of those righteous leaders in government have wound up doing? 
compromising because many of them have been blackmailed. Because you don't go into you don't go into Washington D.C. with a clean with a clean slate. In all likelihood, there there are things in your life that that you would not want anybody to know. You know, there's people in government who would make it their life's work to find out what those things you don't want to know are, so that they can manipulate you to vote the way they want you to vote. There's a lot of things about government we don't want to know. But we do know this, we need to, we need to pray for them so that they can get saved. Who knows, maybe one of us will be able to lead one of them to Christ. And that we can live out this life without worrying. If somebody's going to beat our door down and do something to all of us. What you see in Canada, what you hear about in China, is air mailing to us. And people are being emboldened to know, hey, you know what, we can, we can arrest these jerks. We can put them in prison and we can get away with it. And then of course in China they disappear after so many times. Praise the Lord, praise God that, we're, that we live in this country. Don't miss the, miss the understand what I'm saying, but be concerned enough to, to know that we're, this, this country, that we, when I got saved, that this country isn't, doesn't bear resemblance to the day I got saved. None. And so what we're trying to do is retain it, everything that we can, but one by one, we're just seeing it vanish. We need to be concerned. So on the basis of what our brother Frank said this morning concerning turning up and hearing things that he never heard before and being convicted of what he heard and then following up enough to find out the truth of the matter and knowing that the scripture says that if you're lost, the Lord wants you to be saved and that you can. But it's not your doing, it's his doing. If you'll call on him in faith, he'll save you. He guarantees to do that. If you're here without Christ, if you're watching without Christ, make this the time. And if you're here, you're, you're saved, you know, we would gladly want to see you get baptized as a testimony of the death, burial, and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ and to follow in his footsteps. It has nothing to do with salvation. You can make that intent known, or if you're here and you're not a, and you're not a member, to make the intent known to join in with this local church. We still have so much to do, I think so little time to do it. And praise the Lord for the opportunities we've taken so far. There's many more we need to do. So let's pray. Our Father, we come before you this morning. We did not ask to be born in this country. But in, but in your foreknowledge, we were. Somebody was concerned enough about our, our soul to tell us about Christ. Or they gave us a gospel track. Or we heard a gospel message. And we called on Christ to save us. We thank you for those people who are concerned for the souls of others. And now we who are saved are to do the same for other people. There's many, many people on their way to a Christless eternity. The opportunity is here to receive him. The opportunity in the Christian life is here to move forward in obedience. And so we, we look to you this morning. 
I pray that you would keep us free until you come for us. And that we in turn would take the responsibility and accountability to be faithful to you and the fellowship of each other and the fellowship of the gospel. Have your way in this invitation, for we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.